Hey guys, welcome to the Creative Arena. So in today's tutorial, we're going to create this cool GSAP zoom and blur image review effect on scroll trigger in Elementor. So if you're using the Elementor free version and the Elementor pro version, you'll be able to achieve this effect easily. Okay, so at the end of this tutorial, we're going to create something that looks like so. So now when you scroll down, you can see your image coming in like that and you can see them like this and mind you this effect is responsive on all devices and uh, then we can check it out on all devices like so we check it out on tablet and now when you scroll down on tablet you're gonna see your images coming in like this and also on mobile and I'm going to walk you step by step on how to create this amazing effect to spice whatever project you're working on okay So if you like what you see, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm to suggest this video to other people as well. And if you're new to our channel, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon as well. So without further delay, let's dive in and get started. So in our elemental editing screen, the first thing I'm going to do here is click on this plus icon here. Select the flesh brush container, then I'll select the structure here. I'm going to come over here, set the content width to full width. For the minimal height, I change the unit to VH and give it a value of 100 VH. Then justify content to the center and align item to the center. Then I'm going to come over to our add element and select the heading widget. Now for the heading text, I'm just going to set this text here. Our work speaks for themselves. Then I'll go to the style option and tweak it a little bit. For the alignment, I set it to the center. For the typography, for the font family, I'm going to leave it as default. Depending on the project you're working on, you can change the font family as it pleases you. And then for the font size, I'll set it to REM and give it the value of 3.9 REM. 3.9 REM. And then for the weight, I'm going to give it a weight of 700 bold. And then transform upper keys. Now I'm going to come over here for the text color. I'm going to set it to black. Okay, then I'll go to the advanced settings. For the width, I'm going to set the width to custom and then give it a value of 45%. So we now have a heading like this. Okay, so now the next thing I'll do, I'll come back to our add element and then add the text widget right below the heading text. Not your fancy to do, just the alignment, I set it to the center and then go to the advanced settings. For the width, I set it to custom and then give it a value of 45% as well. So we'll have it like this. Then next, this is just a basic design I'm doing. You can do whatever design you want to do here. And then I'm just going to add a button widget here and then like a call to action. And then I'll set it to uh, contact us now. Okay. Then I'll go to the style option and tweak it a little bit and give it a background color of like this. Okay. So now we've had a basic, you know, a uh, hero section like so to display our works. So what I'm going to do next is right below this button text, I'm going to come over here and add the image widget. Okay. Then I'll go to my media library and select an image. So I'll select this image here. Okay. Then I'll come over to the style option. For the width, I'm going to set the width to 100%. Then I'm going to come over here to the advanced settings. I'll come over to the width and then I'll set the width here to uh, custom. And for a landscape image of this nature, I'm just going to give it a custom width of 25%. So we have something like this. Okay. Then I'm going to come over. This is so optional. It depends on you, however you want to set your size here. Okay. So now go to the style option. Come down to the border radius and give it the border radius of 20 pixel. Okay. So the next thing I'll do here is go back to the advanced settings. Come over to the position and set the position to absolute. Then I'll come over here for the offset. I'm going to change the unit to percentage. And then for the vertical orientation offset, I'll change it to percentage as well. So it's now placed at the center. Then in this case, now all you just need to do is to use the uh, left orientation to move it to the left like this. And then the right orientation to move it, the vertical orientation to move it up and down. Okay. All right. So now we're just going to place it however I want to place it on our page so the next thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to come over here to the 
CSS class and I'm going to add a CSS class here. The reason I'm adding the CSS class here now is because we're going to duplicate this image. I wouldn't want a situation where after duplicating and placing them in the various position we want, we stop adding CSS individually. That's going to make this video longer. We don't want that. So I'm just going to go to my code editor. Now, this is the CSS class we'll be using. So I'm just going to copy it out and come over here and then I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so now I'm just going to duplicate this image and then change the image, select this image here and then go to the advanced settings, come over here to the position and then I'm just going to draw this like this and then I'm going to duplicate it again, change the image, then I'm going to go to the advanced settings, come over here. And then for the vertical, I'm just going to bring it downward like this and then duplicate the image again. Select this image here. Then I'm going to go to the advanced settings and then position it this way like that. Then I'm going to come over here and duplicate the image again. Go to my media library. Now let's select an image that is a bit longer, not landscape view image. Okay, let's select this image like this. Okay, you can see this image is longer and it already looks bigger like this. So we're just going to reduce it for longer images like this. We're going to reduce it to 20%. It can leave it as it is, depends on what you want. So I'm just going to reduce mine to 20%. Then I'm going to bring it to the top like this and then place it somewhere here like this so we'll now have it like this okay then i'm gonna go back here duplicate this image again come over here and select another image like it so you can add multiple images as you want and place them wherever you want to place them on your screen uh you cannot always adjust the placement Okay, so we'll now have it placed like this. So, yep, this is what we'll have like this. Okay, so now this should be enough. This should be enough. Or we can still add more, but let's just work with this. So now before we proceed, I'm just going to check for the responsiveness because this effect works on all screen. So I'm just going to check for the responsiveness for our text here. Okay, so I'm just going to check it on tablet. We can see all we just need to do. We can't really see it on tablet, but... If we should hide the images, we can now see what we are doing here. So we need to like adjust this here. So I'm just going to come over here and then set this to percentage and increase it like that. So we now have it like that and then come over here, set this to percentage and then increase it like this. Uh -huh. So we'll have it like that and mm -hmm. then. We'll go to the mobile. Oh, we're going to come over here, still here, just. Before we do that, let's come over to the style option and then reduce the font size to like that, 2.1. And then let's go back here and increase it like this. Okay, to 100%. And then come over here and increase it to. 100% as well. Now we can add padding to the container. This is just a basic responsiveness setup which you can do on your own. Just add this padding on the, this to the left, give it 20 pixel, 20 pixel. So you have it like this. Okay, so we are now done making it responsive. So we're just gonna remove this. Let's come over back here and let's unhide our images, make them visible. Okay, so we now have this. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come over here and then I'm going to first of all add a CSS class to the various containers here. So I'm just going to rename this container here for reference purposes. So I'm going to call it our parent container. Okay, so now what I'm going to do next is I'll select the current container, come over here and then uh, search for the HTML widget. And then I'm going to select the HTML widget. So now for this HTML widget, make sure it is the last content within the container or else any of the images here will not work if it is above any of the images. Okay. So now 
in a situation where you want to, uh, let's say, add a background color to this or background image to this design here, you can just, just go over here to the parent container and then do add a background image here. It will not make the script work. So the best way to go about adding a background image or background color here is to select this parent container here, come over here and select a container widget. Now we're going to drag this widget here to the top. It should be the first content here. And then I'm going to rename this container to the our background. Okay. So now the next thing I'll do here is I'll come over here for the minimal height. I'll change the unit to VH and give it the value 100. Then I'm going to go to the advanced settings and then give it a position absolute. Okay. So it doesn't take any space. Now you can see now that uh, you can't really edit any other content here, especially the heading the button and then the heading text so not to worry about that so now the next thing i will go to do here is we're going to add our various classes to all the containers here i've already done that of the image widget so now let's add for the parent container come over here to the appliance settings i'll come over to the css class now i'm going to head over to my code now this is the css class we're going to add there for the parent card parent container that's the tca parent wrapper so we're going to come over here and add that then for the background we're going to come over to our advanced settings and then add a CSS class. So this is the CSS class we're going to add. That is the zoom background. I'm just going to come over here, the TCA zoom PG. So now you can see. So as we've done that, the next thing we're going to do, we'll come back here to our HTML widget and then we're going to paste our code here. So now this is the code we're going to paste. Now, mind you, this code will be made available on the description of this video and also pin to the comment section for you to as get have access to it so i'm just going to paste it here and you can see our effect has taken place now let's add our background color isn't this our background here and then let's go to the style option for the background container and then we can select uh, the classic either you set a background color or a background image but i'm going to make use of a background image i have this cool background image here this one here just gonna select it, then come over here for the position, center, center, repeat, set it to node, repeat, and then for the display size, I'm gonna set it to color. Okay, so now we are done with our design. So the next thing we're gonna do here is to preview our design. But before we preview our design, we can come over here and see that we now have a bottom scroll bar like this, which is what we don't want. So in a situation where you have something like this, in order to take it off, you just go to the parent container, here and then come over to the layout and you just come down to the additional option and overflow you're going to set it to hidden so it is now gone so the next thing you can do here is to click on the publish to preview our changes and then we're going to click on the preview changes here okay so now we we'll scroll you can see this wonderful effect like this Then we'll scroll back up, you see it's coming back smoothly, like this. Now you can reposition your images however you want. If you're not okay with where uh, they are, how they are going out, their starting point doesn't really matter, it's their end point that matters. Okay, so you can see now when you place it, let's come back here. And then let's come over here and now let's take out the code. Now these particular images they tend to be lapping, overlapping each other. So now we can just come over here and then move one of the images. Let's say we we'll come over here and let's move this image to the top a little. Okay. So now let's come back here to our HTML widget and now let's paste our code here. Publish it and let's preview it. Okay, now let's scroll and let's see. We can see now they are no longer overlapping each other again. So now that is pretty much it about this tutorial. If you find this video helpful, please remember to hit the like button. And if you're new to our channel, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified first when I drop a new video. Feel free to drop your comment whatever you're confused and I'll do well to attend to as much as I can. But until then, see you on our next video. Bye-bye.